Hello, this is Dan Pro. Welcome back to my Rigify tutorial series. We're in part 8A. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the original spine rig. And I'm also going to include the neck and head rig in this tutorial. The reason I'm uh, doing two different rig types in the same tutorial is basically these two rig types uh, for the original um, rig types. Uh, they, they were meant to work together, and they work together very well. And just for comparison reasons, um, when I get to the Pitchy Poi version, um, the Pitchy Poi spine rig actually uses... Uh, includes the torso and the head and neck in that single spine rig so uh, that'll help for comparison reasons so I want to start off with uh, how to set the bones in the meta rig so you get a good working um, rig for the head and spine rig when you generate it so I can just click on get my uh, I have my meta rig here and this is the one that we've been setting up uh, throughout uh, this tutorial series so I want to isolate the uh, bones within the spine rig and the neck and head so I'm going to select those do control I and H to hide so we can focus just on uh, the three bones that make up uh, the spine rig and the two bones that make up the head and neck rig so uh, I am actually in pose mode here and if I don't say which mode I'm in if the bones are orange I'm in edit mode and if they're blue I'm in pose mode just so you can have a visual indicator of what I'm doing in case I forget to tell you so I'm going to go to bone properties with the hip bone selected here um, you can go down and we'll find rig type and this is where you would tell Rigify to generate a spine rig for this chain of bones so Rigify actually uses either a single bone you can tell it to create a rig type for a single bone or usually a chain of bones so in this case it's a, con a chain of connected bones three bones in that chain so we've got a hip bone spine bone and a chest bone on the very rootmost bone of there that is where you tell it to uh, generate your rig type so these other bones don't need to um, have that filled out it just needs to be on the rootmost bone of that chain and then we have some options here where we can actually change the number of bones um, from this default um, number of three bones in that rig um, to uh, four or more so I'm actually going to come back to the options later I want to generate uh, show you how the three bone um, rig works and then when we add bones later you can see the differences and how that's going to affect the rig when you generate it with more bones so uh, let's once again, I want to talk about the bone placement. So bone placement is done in edit mode. So like I mentioned, you're going to have a three bone chain here to start with for your chest or your spine rig rather. So you'd want to start your hip bone right at the base of the crotch and then you want to extend it up to about the belly button area. So this is actually a pretty important um, stopping point here because this is actually going to be the swing or the, uh, the swinging um, pivot point of your hips. So the, kind of the default swinging point. Um, and from there, um, you'll generally have a very short bone uh, for your spine. Um, the chest bone is going to be uh, quite a bit larger. You'll want to start your chest bone kind of at the midpoint. Um, if you know your bones in your um, ribs here, they kind of start at your sternum, where you start the end of your sternum here, and uh, you'll feel that bony point, and then it kind of wraps down to the sides where your ribs will drop a lot lower here. If you kind of find the halfway point between the bottom here and where um, your stomach starts right there, you can kind of set that point to start your um, chest and that's going to give you a, uh, a good starting point and then you'll want to extend that chest bone up to about where the collarbone is going to um, start. So as far as side uh, view here, I like to center my hip bone on the main mass of um, the pelvis area. So kind of the pelvis minus the glutes so kind of the center of that area and then you can extend um, your other bones up um, I like to kind of imagine an imaginary line that goes through the torso um, bones in your actual skeleton are actually going to be really far back towards uh, the back side here um, that doesn't actually work that great for um, animation um, so when you're setting up bones in your armature, uh, I like to find that center point and then cheat those bones back um, towards the back, but not all the way back. So uh, just slightly back from that center point, and you'll have a good working rig there. Um, since I'm in side view here, where the neck is going to start, I like to start that about the same point as where the chest bone is going to end. So uh, they'll share that point there, and then you can extend that up to uh, just behind the ear, at the base of the skull here um, and then you can extend your last bone which is will be the head bone up and I can I usually go past the edge of uh, 
the mesh here so sticking it out uh, outside the mesh doesn't hurt anything just to make sure it's long enough all right as far as front view here you'll just want to keep everything straight in a line and and uh, for axes you can roll your bones with control R uh, I generally don't do that um, leave my bone rolls at zero you'll notice that the X axis is pointing out to the side here I like to have all the bones in my spine rig um, and the head and neck all pointing the same direction so that's going to be the main um, rotation axes so where everything will rotate around that point now um, if you want to switch it to have the Z's all facing that direction you can go ahead and do that um, just personal preference I like to have all the X axes there so once you've set your bones to match up with your uh, your um, mesh you're ready to uh, go back to pose mode or object mode with your armature selected and under armature properties you can generate your rig and it should work well for you so let's get back to um, the generated rig so we don't have to generate a rig for this one we've already done that and attached all of our meshes to that and see what we've generated so for, as far as the spine rig you're gonna have four different controls you have these three round controls and then one square one and for the head and neck you should have two round controls all right um, in order to see what's happening behind the scenes when you're manipulating these controls I find it's very helpful to turn on the deformation layer which is this third to last layer over here now I've went ahead and, and uh, hidden all the other deformation bones for the other part of the rig just so we can concentrate on the head neck and chest and so on um, I think it's uh, it's nice to be able to see when you manipulate one of the controls what it's actually doing to the deformation bone so um, for the rigify rigs you're always going to have a dedicated set of deformation bones um, rigify is always going to put them on this third to last layer and if you know notice when I select them this is called this is the deaf hips bone every one of those um, transforms is locked so these are not ever meant to be directly um, controlled by the animator um, the control bones are what your animators are going to um, use to uh, manipulate the rig and uh, you're going to set keys on those controls so another thing that can help is when determining what these different controls do is just to look at the transforms now these controls here uh, have all the locations locked so we know that it's not a location controller but we do have access to the rotation and scale um, axes so sometimes you'll find controls that have different um, scales or, or different axes uh, lock for the different transforms so I find that very helpful all right as far as the spine rig the main control is called the torso and that is this box looking um, control right here now that is the main location controller for the spine rig none of the other um, round controls here actually have a location value do it or a location component so this is going to be the way you translate your character forward now I've got IK feet on here they're not that's why the feet are sticking but uh, this is how you would translate your whole character forward and what I want you to notice is the other bones are going to move relative to that location and also you can rotate this control and everything is going to rotate relative to that now what makes this uh, particular spine rig special is um, this central box here is also the pivot the main pivoting um, point of all of these other controls so uh, under rig main properties you'll probably see this pivot um, slide and if you slide it back and forth you'll notice that the um, the spine rig kind of travels through that point so um, this value can actually go from zero which will be at the base if I just type that in do zero um, that will change the rotation point to the very end of this chain or the very start of this chain and a, a value of one will go right to the very end at the top of that chest bone and it will change that rotation point there now you'll probably notice that when you're sliding this back and forth uh, by default when you're using a three bone chain here um, you can only slide down to 0 0.333 now 0 0.333 because you're using a three bone chain that is one third of a the value of 0 to 1 so one third of that is 0.333 that is that default rotation point and it's just a natural good rotation point for um, your your hips but like I mentioned you can slide that all the way down now what's preventing this to sliding all the way to from 0 to 1 
is something called soft limits. Now, I personally find this to be kind of annoying, so I'm going to show you how to fix that. So if you select your torso control and go to bone properties, you'll just need to slide down and find custom properties. And if that is collapsed, you can open it up. And under pivot slide, there should be a custom property there that you can edit. Now, again, the property value here goes from 0 to 1, which we can see. Um, but this checkbox, use soft limits, this is what's cre um, preventing it from sliding to any other value other than 3 point th or 333 and 0.667. So if you just uncheck this, click OK, now you'll be able to slide your whole chain from uh, the top to the very bottom. Uh, kind of a downside of that is if you're sliding this around, um, you will need to manually punch in 0.333 to get back to your default of um, this point right there. So that is the pivot sliding rig. Uh, under most circumstances, everything is going to work very well if you just leave it at 0.333, so, um, or the de default that it's going to give you. So, uh, as I mentioned, the hips are kind of kind of rotate from that central point. So when you're doing walks, that's just going to be a natural uh, way for your hips to um, act. And uh, uh, I prefer, you know, you should probably just keep it there. Um, but there are going to be some instances where you need to uh, pick a different rotation point. So. Uh, probably not the end point is going to be very useful. The only thing I can think of is kind of a painful <laughs> analogy is that's when you're riding your bike and your feet slip off and you fall down on that bar and then you kind of tip over. So uh, please don't do an animation like that and show it to me. Uh, it brings back bad memories. Um, <laughs> and uh, one other situation that I can think of, let's say you have, uh, if Eve is backed up against the wall, and uh, you wanted to keep her chest area stationary, but you still wanted to rotate these uh, uh, lower control, these lower controls um, to do some uh, animations. Um, you'll notice if you, you rotate that, you probably have to counter animate, move this over. If you rotate too far, you're gonna counter animate against that movement. So you could use that uh, pivot slide to fix that. So you can slide it to let's say about this point right here. Now, if she was stuck to the wall, when you rotate these other controls, it's not going to affect that chest. So, that can be useful in situations like that, um, or trapeze work, or things like that, when you just want to change the whole rotation um, center of the chain here. So, like I mentioned, most times you'll want, just want to keep it at the default of 0.333 if you're using a three bone chain. If you're using four, that default will be different. So. Uh, the values are going to go be the same, 0 to 1. So if you had a 4 bone chain, the, the default will be 0.25. So um, that is the main torso control. I know it took a little bit longer to explain that. These other ones are actually pretty easy. These are mainly rotation controllers, but they do have a scale value. Um, you can scale them too. Um, scaling them uh, all together, all three um, axes isn't usually very helpful, but you can um, if you limit them to a single axis, like uh, if I scale in the local Y axis, sometimes doing a stretchy, a stretching that bone can be helpful. Um, or scale ZZ, sometimes using this as a breathing control. So just scaling the Z axis only can help you uh, uh, get that breathing. So, uh, like I mentioned before, though, they are mainly rotation controllers. Again, the main torso controller and the pivot slide is what is um, determining where that um, pivot point is. So on the hips, it's going to rotate from that central point. If you rotate the um, chest, again, it's rotating from that central point. And just keep in mind that the deformation bone is staying relative to that control. So basically, you're directly controlling um, the deformation bone with this chest controller and the hip deformation bone with this this controller. Now, the, this central control, this for the spine, clear everything out here, um, has a uh, another rig property on it called auto rotate spine. So you might have noticed that it, it looked like it was actually rotating uh, by itself, and that's exactly what it was doing. So by default, this is usually on, and what that is doing is no matter what rotation you put on the chest or the hips, it's going to find kind of that central point between those two and it's going to auto rotate to give you a good smooth um, deformation in between there. So 
under most circumstances this is very helpful to weave auto rotate spine on because then you just can use it you can also rotate on top of that um, so you can use that as a tweak so it just allows you to only concentrate on the rotations of the chest or the rotations of the hips and that will just kind of follow in line and give you a nice um, deformation um, but there are going to be some instances where you um, will need to counter animate against that auto rotation um, let's say you need to kind of do some overlapping movement that moves up or down the spine sometimes in those situations you will want to turn that off and then you'll have to manually um, manipulate those controls to get the pose that you want but you'll notice that I can move the hips and it's not having any effect on that if I move this it's not really having any effect on the chest you're not uh, it's a little bit easier to propagate that that rotation or movement up or down your spine so those are the main controls the main uses of the spine um, up next we have two different controls for the head and neck now but by default this isolate head will be off and the neck follow head is going to be on I'm gonna start with neck follow head and what that does if this was called something different you'd already know so basically this is the same as auto rotate spine where uh, the spine is just going to pick the halfway point between the chest and the the hips what auto what neck follow head is going to do is going to pick the halfway point between the chest and the head so if I rotate this and rotate the spine back it's just going to whatever the rotations are in between it's going to do a nice smooth um, rotation in between there um, next up is this isolate head so when I rotate the chest or basically anything in this spine here um, with um, isolate head off um, it's going to inherit that rotation so it's going to follow it um, that could actually be problematic um, when you're animating let's say you just need to make a little slight adjustment to your torso then you would have to come up to your head and counter animate it back because usually you, you, your head is stays more straight up and down again if you went the other way and then you'd have to counter animate it back so if you turn on isolate head it's going to do just that which is isolate the head from the rotations of the chest so this can actually save you a lot of time um, fighting counter animation so it doesn't really matter which way you go the, the combination of auto rotate for your neck or neck follow head um, and um, isolating the rotation from your head is actually going to uh, save you a lot of time and easier animations so I do want to point out that there is a bug in the neck rig um, when you generate a new rig on the head control the location values um, are not are unlocked and they should be locked because this is never really meant to be a location controller and you can actually get some strange results if you accidentally move that and didn't clear this out so clear this the locations out to zero make sure they're zero and then make sure you lock that this should only be a rotation controller so the last few versions of blender have had this bug um, I don't know when it was really introduced but uh, so far it hasn't been fixed or I don't know if anybody has actually even really reported it but this uh, is a bug make sure you lock your location values on your head control and of course make sure that they're zeroed out before you do so now, your neck also you can, is mainly a rotation control you can scale in specific axes I don't see where scaling all the axes at once are, are very helpful maybe scaling all the axes for the head if you wanted to make a bobblehead doll maybe um, can come into play but that's the main rig controls and how to use them and also the main rig properties uh, for the spine um, and head and neck sections of the rig alright so let's get back to a fresh file and I want to talk about how you can generate a different number of bones for your spine rig and I'm going to do shift A let's add a new armature human meta rig so we just start with a fresh one here let me zoom in control tab into pose mode and we'll go find our um, options down here now one options you can change right off the bat is that main control name uh, the master control is called torso if you uh, want to call it something different you can actually do that here and it will uh, change that name when it generates the rig rest pivot slide now this is a little bit more involved uh, basically 0, 0.0 is a magic number so it doesn't matter how many bones you have in your spine rig your connected um, set of bones here uh, by default it's going to be three this magic number of 0, 0.0 is just going to find the next bone in the chain or the second bone in the chain and that is going to be the de 
default rotation point for um, for the hips uh, or the torso um, the torso control itself um, but you can put this to any value you want let's say you wanted it at the uh, halfway point if you had four bones and let's actually add four bones here so I'm going to select the chest in pose mode or edit mode rather and uh, W subdivide and we just change the name of this from chest to chest.low and this top one here chest.high now we can go back to pose mode um, now that main torso control is going to um, it's going to generate right here at the halfway point so we've got four bones in our chain 50% uh, would be right there and uh, our control bone list now we have four bones instead of three bones um, in order to be able to manipulate all four of those bones you'll want to change your control bone list and you can just use the one comma two comma three comma so however many bones you want I'm just doing four here you just do four so comma four and um, now it will generate all of the uh, rig controls for a four bone rig so let's go to our armature panel click generate in a few seconds here we should have a working rig it's popped up on our screen I'm just gonna move it to a fresh layer so we can isolate it from the uh, meta rig there and concentrate just on the generated rig and do control tab to go into pose mode and I'm going to hold shift and click on this third to last layer so we can see the deformation bones now as I mentioned we changed the rest pivot slide um, to uh, 0.5 which was 50 percent of these four bones here so that is our new um, natural let me see if I drag this rig main properties up here so you can see it that's the new um, default pivot slide um, position now you'll notice that this is still sliding it's got using the soft limits but those limits are a little bit different again you can just go into bone properties custom properties edit and check off use soft limits OK and now you can slide from 0 to 1 all the way along that four bone chain now again 0.5 is going to be our default now we've got a hip bone down here it's going to rotate from that center point um, we now have another bone called spine this is still going to have an auto rotate um, uh, slider for it but this other bone our chest low will also have an auto rotate so uh, the main controls are going to be the top and bottom the hip and the chest high that we've renamed it and these other two bones are just going to auto rotate uh, by themselves if you have that on or you can turn that off and just manually do that or just use these as tweaks so that is how you would customize the number of bones in there now I actually don't find changing that pivot point to be um, that halfway point to be very useful but uh, at least it, it's not useful when you're using this um, spine rig for a humanoid character now you could use the spine rig for uh, for a um, quadruped but then you would have your uh, you would want to align uh, of course you'd have your spine aligned uh, horizontally with the world and in that instance having that central point will actually work a little bit better for a quadruped because then you can kind of swing the tail end of that creature or the front end of that creature from that center point so I think it's a little bit uh, better for dogs cats or whatever any type of quadruped that you would be rigging so um, there is that um, another thing about using four bones versus three bones three bones actually works very well because your upper chest is pretty stiff and because it's it's mainly all your rib bones um, there's not a lot of flexibility there um, so three bones actually works pretty well I actually usually use four bones for um, my personal projects and the reason for that is even though the upper chest doesn't have a lot of flexibility there is some there so I like to have that um, there is a cost to that though the first thing is you've got extra control bones that you need to manipulate and keyframe and uh, polish in your graph editor and the second thing is is having extra control bones means you have extra deformation bones and that means that your weight painting is going to be uh, you're gonna complicate that as well so there are more things to wait there's more transitions um, to deal with so uh, I'm not going to recommend using one or the other if you are okay with the extra work or four bones um, go ahead and do that or even more um, 
uh, three bones actually works very well and I would uh, suggest sticking with that especially if you're new to rigging and um, weight painting so that covers the head and neck rig the original versions um, up next we'll talk about the pitchy poi version so until then good luck <laughs>